What's going on everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Jermaine and I am currently a full-time nursing student and this is going to be my first video and presentation on YouTube. Now, most of my content will reflect information in the medical field. So if you're currently a student in the medical field or you're aspiring to become someone in the medical field, or maybe you just, you know, someone that likes to learn, hit that subscribe button, please kick back and enjoy the material I'll be posting. And other than that, let's just jump right into it. Now, this presentation is going to be a two part series. All right. And we're going to discuss the skeletal system, usually discussed in AMP one, which started everything for me. Now, the skeletal system serves to support our structure and body shape in general. Second, it acts as a barrier or a protective covering for, you know, our major organs. So any blunt trauma that may occur, any falls, usually our bones are impacted before any internal organ, depending on, you know, where exactly the damage is dealt. If someone gets hit in the head, for example, um, besides the skin, the skull is the first organ impacted. It protects the brain. So if we go to the chest area, the lungs, heart, and say the liver, or better yet, the right lobe of the liver, these are protected by our rib cage. So, you know, you guys get the gist. Um, in addition to protection, movement is also a function that the skeletal system assists in due to the fact, you know, our muscles uses our bones as levers, our attachment sites, you know, to help facilitate any movement. Moving along, we get to storage and storing exactly what? Calcium. Now, guys, calcium, our bones are like calcium reservoirs. So calcium takes on different forms in the body. For example, there's ionized calcium, which is important for cellular functioning. Um, I'm going to be posting an electrolyte video soon, giving you guys a more in-depth look in not just calcium, but all the electrolytes in general. So stay tuned. Anyway, calcium is utilized in processes such as cardiac contraction, blood coagulation, transmission of nerve impulses, and muscular contractions. For this unit primarily, the skeletal system, calcium phosphate is very vital in a process called calcification or calcifying matrix which just refers to you know solidifying of our bones which is you know process of making them hard pause um lastly the skeletal system is the leading factor in a process called hematopoiesis now this is blood cell formation that's white blood cells red blood cells platelets which we'll talk about soon Anyway, hematopoiesis is significant because it replenishes our circulatory system when it needs that replenishing of blood. So we can then start by getting to the components of the skeletal system, which consists of bone, obviously, cartilage, ligaments, and tendons. Now our bones is for that support we need, while you know cartilage is for flexibility, and without it, moving would not just be stiff, but very painful, guys. So keep that in mind um lastly we get to ligaments and tendons which just refers to what is being connected ligaments being bone to bone and tendons being muscle connecting to bone now a way i remember this you know how to differentiate between the two is to remember one that way you know the other so i chose tendon and you know tendon starts with the word 10 and i correlated 10 with pounds or dumbbell when you think dumbbell, you think muscle. So tendon connects muscle to bone and ligaments connect bone to bone. We are going to get an in-depth look at cartilage. And cartilage is a avascular tissue, connective tissue. And avascular just means it lacks blood supply, okay? It is wrapped in a membrane called the perichondrium, okay? So con means cartilage and peri means outside. And it is within the perichondrium that we find a vascular system, okay? So this is what carries the supply of blood vessels. So therefore, the cartilage itself gets its nutrients and supply from the perichondrium. So below to the left, there's a magnified picture of cartilage. And those little holes you see within the cartilage are called lacunae. Yeah, lacunae. This stemming from the word lacuna, which means an unfilled space or gap. I just searched that up on Google. But anyway, that unfilled space or gap, the plural term is lacunae. I, I like saying the word. But anyway, all the purple is cartilage and a substance called matrix, okay? Now, there's also matrix of bone and matrix is made up of a bunch of different substances. However, it's vital for cartilage for its collagen and elastin fibers. So there are three primary types of cartilage. We got our hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. So hyaline is firm but flexible, and it's found at our bone ends, nose, and rib cage. So, you know, the lower part portion of your nose is where you'll find the, the hyaline cartilage. The upper portion is where you'll find more bone, okay? 
And then we have our elastic cartilage, and um, it does exactly what its name. It elasticizes, so it moves freely. So this we can find at places like our outer ear, referred to as our helix, and our epiglottis, which is in our throats and assists in swallowing our deglutition, okay? So you want to know that individuals that contract disorders such as osteoarthritis, lupus or even gout their cartilage is affected tremendously in turn affecting their mobility all right so in terms of itis that refers to inflammation and art refers to a joint so when we put them together we get arthritis which just refers to inflammation of a joint okay in the case of osteoarthritis osteo means bone it just refers to the inflammation on and or fraying away of a cartilage on a bone so when this happens, our bones no longer have that protective coat named cartilage, which is the blue portion in the picture. Instead, bone tends to rub against bone, okay? And that causes frictional pain. We don't want bone against bone, okay? So when I took anatomy class, my professor said, think of it like two pencils turned upside down. When the erasers touch one another, the erasers serve as cartilage. So as we age, that those erasers will fray away, and then we'll just be left with the pencils touching the pencils and that's what causes the pain okay um lastly we have our fibro cartilage guys and those are our shock absorbers and those are found in our intervertebral discs which is in our spinal cord and it's also found at the mis menisci which is in our knee so if y'all if you guys like you know you're physically active and you're jumping or running or you land these pretty much take the um the shock that's being um, attributed to them. So if you jump up and you land, these they pretty much bounce and recoil. So, you know, it's pretty handy to have those. Okay, now we're going to classify bones for where they are and the shape that they are. So in terms of location, we have an axile skeleton and a appendicular skeleton. Axile refers to axis, so you can think vertical, okay? And this is the location of our skull, rib cage, our vertebral column. A appendicular on the other hand this refers to the body's appendages and appendages means limbs okay guys so you can think horizontal which would be things such as our arms which consist of a humerus ulnar and radius along with our legs or our pelvis which is our hips okay our right, bone shapes vary and we have four main shapes okay that of long which you can think of a humerus as depicted in the diagram you have short which is a cube shaped pointing to things such as our talus which is in our ankle we have flat bones referring to our sternum which is in the middle of our chest and lastly we have irregular bones which have a complex shape and are a part of our vertebral column okay see a close-up view of bone tissue and it is a beautiful depiction of what is called compact bone and spongy bone which are the two bone tissue types okay usually there's an outer layer of compact bone sandwich and spongy bone and compact bone we see here on the outside is the more dense and smooth bone tissue okay so spongy bone which we see here is honeycomb like and thin have her, having interweaving spaces and the thin bone is just called trabeculae okay guys trabeculae and the outside blue part is just a piece of cartilage on the outside we see here a typical long bone and let's say this was our humerus again okay that long bone in the top portion of your arm now, the enlarged endings are called an epiphysis, and depending on where the large end is, either top or bottom, they get their own name, okay? They're differentiated differently. So, for example, if it is at the top, it is referred to as the proximal epiphysis. If it is below, it is the distal epiphysis, okay? Now, the first term we can talk about is the diaphysis, which is the central shaft we see here, composed of compact bone, and within it is the marrow-filled medullary cavity, okay? So... Medullary just means inner region of a structure, in this case, inner region of bone. So we already discussed the epiphysis, but it's important to make note of that within the epiphysis, we find the compact bone and the spongy bone, okay? It's not in the diaphysis, okay? It's within the epiphysis, all right? And also on the outside of the epiphysis, we will find our cartilage. Remember, hyaline cartilage is at the bone ends. This is where we would find it. And it's labeled articular cartilage there because it is at a joint, all right? Remember, art means joint, okay? Lastly, the epiphyseal line. And this is seen in the epiphysis, okay? So this is usually seen in adults and not in children. And it signifies like that full growth has a cure, all right? So in adults, the line is always prominent. And um, usually it's composed of hyaline cartilage 
and it's then replaced by bone tissue okay and once it gets that bone replacement it's it you ain't growing no more okay it's like cut off now in males this is usually around 21 in females they stop growing around 18 but the attitude don't stop growing so it's like damn we're still on the topic of a typical long bone this is just a close-up view of the diaphysis guys um, now our bones are lined with a connective tissue lining both the inside and outside of bone and this connective tissue is our bone membranes okay and our bone membranes are composed of bone cells which are osteoblasts and osteoclasts and we're going to talk about them a bit more in part two of this video but they are highly vascularized okay they bring in a lot of blood supply now the periosteum which is the next term refers to the membrane on the outside surrounding the diaphysis okay and um, the endosteum which is the next term this refers to the membrane within the medullary cavity and the spaces of spongy bone which you can see just above the yellow portion of the bone marrow Alrighty, so here are the substances within bone marrow cavities. So we have red marrow and we have yellow marrow. The red marrow is that hematopoietic agent that forms red blood cells and it's found within spongy bone, okay? Yellow marrow, on the other hand, this is referred to as fat and this is found within the medullary cavity. So in terms of location, one is in the epiphysis while the other is in the diaphysis, all right? Off topic, in the diaphysis, which is the yellow marrow, this is the part that they throw into like soup so you'll usually see these bones within soup and within the middle of them is fat so fat usually thickens and gives flavor to the soup and trust me if you're from the caribbean you know i said it's so bad because it is wicked bad means good all right uh remember fat is flavor when it comes to the culinary world so keep that in mind uh we can make note of that as we age what was once red marrow that red marrow will convert into yellow marrow which is fat so it becomes fat and fat cannot produce blood anymore so apparently only in severe cases of anemia yellow marrow can convert back into red marrow which will produce blood once again which is pretty cool for us and we're gonna stop here okay guys um and we're gonna pick up from where we left off in part two we're gonna be discussing the microscopic anatomy of bone this is the cells now we're gonna end it off with fractures all right so stay tuned and click the next video guys